Hey, yes, Mark, I'm going to look at some charts here. And it looks like today we had pretty much return to business as usual in the stock market. I was looking at the dollar, like the dollar has been up. The uh, I just watch it with as an as as the equity with the UUP. So of course it's not really the best way to trade the dollar, but it kind of gives you an idea. I just, I just keep it on my watch list sometimes to see see what the dollar's doing. So uh, yeah, it looks like we're pretty much breaking out here again. And the thing I noticed was you can see it it tends to trade in these channels, these pretty tight channels, like back back last year and pretty much all the time it's in a channel, you know, and so what I noticed here was in the past it's it's respected the breakouts of the channel. So so back here it broke down out of the channel and then it kind of retested or tried to there was like a big big bull trap up there back in um it's like the first day of November and it, that was a huge trap and uh, it just was down, down, you know, after that. And then when we broke up, we broke below this channel here, that was a pretty good indicator for, you know, about a month or so for a trade. And then we went back into an uptrend, you know, it resumed right there. And then it was in this tight channel in March and it broke down below it just uh, the past week or so and it tried to break down but then is quickly reversed so to me that's a failed signal so a failed signals where the the chart looks like it's going to do one thing and that that actually doesn't come to fruition and does the opposite so they can be pretty powerful because because what happened with the market was really had a huge change in direction you know um so so that reversal here is looks like a failed signal because it failed to break down again. So I think just having a couple days here, it looks like it's pretty pretty strong because back here, you know, try to break out and it failed. And it tends to kind of congest around around a resistance area. So to me, it looks like I mean just the fact that we. Um, we're up dollars up two days in a row here. Yeah, it looks looks really bullish to me. So that's I did put on some a small small uh, trade in the, in the options on the EUP. So so yeah, that's that's one of the things I saw. Cause I've been paying more attention to the equity market because I I look at stocks more than than bonds and everything. But sometimes I check bonds especially like junk bonds and you know, you, of course like TLT and treasuries to, to kind of get a gauge for if it's risk on or risk off. But yeah, today is pretty, pretty normal day. Like my, my scans, my, my gap down scan didn't have many, many hits. Like my, I try to go through the scan every night and my, my gap down scan has been pretty consistent with, uh, picking shorts and kind of just gives me a gauge on the market. So, so the fact we only had it only had 11 hits today, so it's really nothing. Like it was 100 yesterday. So it's pretty much yeah, it's definitely on the low end. So I don't think there's gonna be any follow through in the market off of the CPI CPI report. It looks like looks like you know there's not gonna be a huge sell off off of it, which. Could have happened, you know, because I was saying the CPI day can be a pivot day, but it looks it doesn't look like the market's reacted overall. I mean, it's just like I was saying, then the regionals still kind of weak. I mean, the regionals it printed positive, but I mean, they were down a lot, I mean, barely made it back up to that support level. These regional banks, and I assume IWM was weak too, but. It's actually a little bit better, but still, still, yeah, the IWM, the Russell's still at risk here, going back down this channel. So that, that was a long channel that it was kind of the peak, and then it has to hold above these levels to continue, and it's 
threatening to come back down. You know, that wasn't much of a uh, breakout. So, yeah, it's just still messy. You know, that's the thing about it's really hard to get long biased on the Russell just because it has so many banks and, you know, the small caps, they're, you know, so many of the companies in the Russell are unprofitable and they rely heavily on debt financing and, you know, with rates higher, you know, it's not, it's just not good stuff, you know, it's just never been, hasn't been good for a while. <laughs> so yeah, but big tech, I, I noticed big tech today was interesting, like the, this NVIDIA, NVIDIA, it held that level that I, that I had drawn out, because it was a level that goes back, you know, just until March, and it was the level after the gap up, that gap up there, breakout, because it did a break off a bull flag and it just keeps going off bull flags so I just it looks like a long bull flag now because that's what it did when it because it found support and then it hit support there you know like I was kind of thinking it might either today or tomorrow or yeah today or tomorrow so so it found that support level which is pretty good for for tech and, and Nvidia looks just like the Nasdaq really so and it looks like the, I think that's the open there. So we're, looks like it could be another trend day at the open here um, with the futures open. So that'd be interesting. Yeah, if it's another trend day, it's definitely not a, a reversal from CPI. So yeah, I was looking. I was looking at some of these, some of the housing related stocks, like my watch list and. There's potential in these for short still, like the Wayfair. You know, these green days are really good days to get shorts, you know, if you're puts, well, mostly puts, you know, if uh, this, we get a good bump up here. But it was the Rocket Mortgage has been weak too. I mean, you look at the, I was looking at the long, longer term chart here. It did a double top back uh, from December, and it's failed to get any momentum, you know, around these highs. So it looks like a double top setting up to me. And of course, the high rates don't aren't that good for Rocket because they um, they're from what I know, what I, what I assume is mostly new business, the new mortgages. So uh, yeah, it's. Doesn't look good for that one. But I saw one thing today. It was the cons. Uh, cons is super, super cyclical and consumer dependent. And they had a better than expected quarter um, the last quarter. Like the sales were up um, pretty good, really, like almost 10%, I think. And that was kind of surprising to see because they, they've been struggling a while. So maybe... Maybe it's not as bad out there, obviously, as um, some people think, or even for cons, because they they did they did see some weakness in their uh, in their business. But it looks like they're kind of optimistic about next year, so we'll see. So that's kind of that's kind of a little surprising, you know, because um, they have they haven't they haven't really been doing that well, but. Sometimes when things go bad for so long, any any uptick is taken as bullish, really. So, yeah, the other stuff is I found I found a bunch of these supernovas, like the IZM. The IZM's on there too. I'm not gonna trade IZM because I'm not gonna short it because I I just do puts now by for supernovas. Uh, I only you know have a short bias for puts now. But yeah, that, that this IZM is going to be a great short. And if you if you if you short stocks, you know supernovas, and you can watch it pretty close. Or you know you use small size and have a stop or something. This one's going to be. This one's going to be a good one, because it, it's a, this is a China one, and these China ones have been going. I've seen some. Like the other one, I can't remember the ticker at the moment, but. One of the last ones was a huge, was a big runner and a, and a supernova. So this one's China, and we got 
this volume out of nowhere so it doesn't get any better than this really for a supernova stock went from like eight dollars to forty dollars in like eight days and it's still going i thought like there's a huge looks like it was a huge uh, push down in the morning on on after hours but yeah these things can keep going and going these these china ones but when it when it starts when it finally has the first red day, when there's the first red candle on the day, that's when that's most likely when the, the top's gonna be in. Especially at this point, because it's up so much. Yeah, that one's just crazy. And the MDIA is another one. And uh I didn't mention this one, like I mean I, I could have the other day because I found it um a couple days ago, but this one went from like 50 cents to six dollars in like a week or so and this one I'm not I mean this one looks like a legit company I mean it's like an American company but um this one cracked a little bit today there's not much volume though the sell volume was pretty light so um that's kind of surprising but maybe it's not done yet going up but usually when they start cracking support and there's like a bunch of sell volume that means the top's in because the volume is the volume is often the key the, you gotta watch the volume there should be a lot of sell volume for a top and uh, another one i'll look at long bias is lab and it's acting really nice in this in this channel here like because that's the old resistance is holding as support now so it's got some trend support there. It's holding well, and it just keeps hanging in there. So I think this one, this one, I'll probably take a, sh I might, I'll, I'll probably take a shot at it with um, some calls because uh, it's just, it's a good chart, and I think the industry is going to do well, especially the next couple of years. And that's some of the main things I was looking at. I mean, Microsoft's kind of the same in a channel still but they're looking really good I mean a lot of these tech charts look like they, they want to break out again like um, meta is like right on the verge of uh, another breakout I mean that could be a bull flag it looks like right there so and I'm sure I think Google broke out too yeah Google broke out today again so yeah that's I mean, big tech is looking pretty good again. I mean, we'll see how much it sustains, but yeah, it's looking pretty, pretty, pretty good. These stocks. And oil was down a little bit, but it's still, it kind of looks like a bull flag on oil. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I that I looked at that I want to talk about. I think that's about it really yeah there was a biotech i found a biotech stock uh from a scan this nktr it's already up a ton so it's not really ideal <laughs> as a long but the volume today was was huge and it just came off a bull flag right there so i haven't checked this one out yet but it must be something really interesting going on but the thing that's interesting was the breakout and the, the volume. So it's, it, that's a good long watch. It's a good long bias. And I do, I do, I do continue to see a lot of biotechs in my memo scan. Yeah, rent the runway was up too today. The rent. I mean, that's like a supernova now too. The rent. So, oh, it's off earnings though. Yeah, that's. That's pretty risky to short, but I mean, obviously there's some, there's a little bit to get there on the short side, you know, because it's up so much, but we'll see. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it gaps down tomorrow or if it uh, opens up a lot lower tomorrow. And yeah, I'll just kind of go, I was going through one of my scans, some of my scans here. I got all the supernovas and 
that's about it really so uh so i'll catch you the next one